Hello and welcome to episode three of our Timberborn Colony Showcase series here in Update 5 Experimental with a submission courtesy of Brian Thompson here uh, with the Iron Teeth faction. And here's what he has to say about his submission. He says, come and join us at the Beaver Resort. It's a perfect place to vacation with the kids or just have a weekend away. Either way, you will never want to leave. He says, bots do all the work. Happiness is maxed. There is very little tiles not used. So thanks very much, Brian, for your submission. Let's take a look around what you have here. Because uh, before I started recording, I uh, took a look at all the different stuff. And there's a lot, a lot going on. Let's go ahead and pause real quick because it's about to be nighttime. And I want to make sure I can show you some of this in the day before we uh, let the clock run. But uh, just real quick, uh, colony stats, we've got 396 beavers. They're all adults, you'll note, which will... Uh, Talk a little bit about later, 533 bots. Uh, cycle 58, day eight, in the middle of a bad tide currently. And you'll notice up here in the corner, that says 64. That is the highest vanilla uh, well-being you can get. Every single thing is pegged all the way to the right. Full values, so this is quite literally a completely solved <laughs> beaver paradise. I know that's what we said in episode one, but this is this is actually 64 happiness. This is, it literally cannot get any higher than this in uh, in the vanilla game. But we take a look at how this is laid out. We'll go back to single time speed here. All the uh, other living space is kind of concentrated right here and they have everything they need because if you go underneath, you kind of peel the layers back a little bit. Underneath, yeah, there's a whole lot of stuff here. Underneath all of these houses, there's all sorts of storage. We have kohlrabis here. We've got fermented mushrooms, mango fruits, more kohlrabis. Everything is just kind of distributed pretty evenly underneath everything. And there's all sorts of water storage. We also have uh, some grease here. Like it, it's very well organized in terms of getting the beavers access to everything they need. And then bots, of course, taking care of all the work. Everything just has to be distributed fairly around here. And you're going to see a whole lot of really methodical placement in what he's done here. So since the, uh, oh yeah, you see this giant, uh, giant reservoir right here. Yeah, well, if you go back to the, uh, the normal layer height, all of that's built on top of, like, look at all these pumps, man. <laughs> There's so many pumps here, and we, we, we have a whole smorgasbord of delicious and maybe not so delicious liquids here. Uh, canola oil, extract, grease again, coffee, plenty of water, bad water as well. And all of this is just really, really nicely organized. This is one of the water entrances for the map, and you're going to notice there's a ton of these deep mechanical fluid pumps. And uh, yeah, it's it's a lot, a lot of stuff here. This whole channel pretty much is just constantly being, uh, I guess, eliminated by the use of these deep mechanical pumps. But these are only pumping bad water. So before we're done, uh, I am going to go into dev mode and advance the seasons just so we can see what this looks like in a normal, uh, normal cycle with the good water. But in a bad water, yeah, it... Um, it just pumps all this out. You can see these little drippings coming out of the, if the computer will play nice with me, coming out of the end of the pumps here. So all of this bad water is just being strategically removed. And by the time you get down to the end, there's nothing left. So I thought that was a really cool thing to highlight. Of course, beavers uh, doing recreational things with their zero hour work days, getting some Zumba or yoga or whatever in over here, taking in a government mandated fun time here at the Motivatorium. And then a little bit of, well, I guess it's not indoor skydiving, it's outdoor skydiving, but you're not jumping out of a plane here at the wind tunnels. Uh, again, beaver paradise part two, I suppose. Lots of space over here for relaxation with the campfires. Uh, there's rooftop terraces, again, uh, with the lovely redesign for the Iron Teeth faction uh, that we just recently got. And yes, these are green. These are the advanced breeding pods, so there are no beaver children, no kits, no whatever you want to call them. We're only producing adult beavers, which I guess if they're not working isn't really necessary, but also is just, you know, kind of a neat thing to, to do because that's the more advanced technology. This lovely, wow, wow, lovely tribute to ingenuity right here. And of course you have the other monuments as well. Labor monuments here, here, here. Wow, wow, wow. Owen Wilson in beaver form, I suppose. Um, but yeah, control towers throughout so the bots get a nice boost. And there is really, really good coverage here. Pretty much the entire map, as far as I was able to tell, is covered by these control towers. So bots are working splendidly. Plenty of trees for cutting and for harvesting of 
all the different things that you need from trees. And then I thought this was so cool when I booted this up and I took a look at this. I said, you know what? There's no outlet for the, uh, for the bad water here. So what he's done is he's actually taken uh, these bad water sources and he's created kind of a perpetual motion machine <laughs> with these things here. So the, the water comes out here. If we get rid of these buildings, if I can get the pumps to go away, I don't know if it's going to make them go away. I guess not. Well, okay, so I guess that doesn't matter. But uh, basically what's what's happened here, if you take a look at how this is set up, this is basically completely separate here. And what happens is the water flows through here and then it goes around and around and around and around and around. Yeah, uh, ring a bell. <laughs> that was the kind of thing I was attempting to do in one of our previous playthroughs. I think I mentioned that in the other uh, Iron Teeth thing that we were looking at. But there's just so, 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 so many water wheels. Like, look at all this power. He's making over 80,000, 80,000 HP, and only using, what, two-thirds of that, maybe, maybe 60%. And then the bad water, or I guess, uh, well, it's probably actually only bad water since this is a, a bad water source, duh. But it comes out here, and I thought this was so cool. I, I've never tried to actually build this, but I've always wanted to. It comes in here, and then these pumps just suck it up and put it right back through the loop again. And I don't know how many, like eight of these right here, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 40. We'll, we'll just say there's a lot, 15 or 16 of these bad water pumps, or I guess just mechanical pumps at this point. Uh, just putting the water, bad water back up here and it just goes all the way through. And all of these... It, this is engineered in such a way where these just kind of power themselves by pumping the water that uh, goes through the stuff that they draw power from. So I thought that was kind of cool, a little uh, physics-breaking perpetual motion machine. But hey, it's Timberborn, and you, uh, you're you able to do that. So that is where pretty much all the power comes from for this entire playthrough. And of course, there's uh, all sorts of stuff over here. We have our hydroponic farms nicely organized. Of course, you have your storage for algae and your storage for mushrooms. Everything, again, everything is very, very logically laid out. Plenty of charging stations for the bots, and they are scattered pretty evenly around most of the areas the bots are going to be working in. And the power is going all the way throughout the colony, too. Let's not forget, it is just snaking its way around, powering all sorts of chargers, and then, of course, the industrial area here. And yes, there are number crunchers, and check out that science amount, 362,000 science. That's bonkers, man. <laughs> That's so much science. And then this thing right here, of course, has these other uh, bad water sources, plenty of bad water pumps, it's just a huge, enormous stock of bad water. Like there's 11,000 stored uh, in terms of the extract, there's 6,500. I managed to push the uh, the rotation button again. But uh, yeah, it, again, the power just goes all the way around the entire map. Everything is completely connected. And this is just a really impressive feat of engineering here. Plenty of farming as well. Uh, canola, huge supply, which you're going to need if you're making this much food all the time. Got 3,800 of the canola oil just chilling here and plenty in reserve here all these terraformers of course these are paused because well there's there's not really any more need for dirt now that most of the terraforming is done but uh, you take a look at the amount of dirt that is just absolutely everywhere like he didn't use levees to build all this up this is all just terraformed so that is a ton a ton a ton a ton of dirt which is just so cool to see i know my frame rate is absolutely chugging but bear with me here we're, we're, we're trying our best. So I think what, what happens here is this actually will generate additional power uh, if this ever overflows, kind of like a nice fail-safe thing. If we take some of the buildings away, you can kind of get a better idea of how this works. He says, well, then nothing disappears. So, all right, do, do as I say, not as I do. But I just love the design of this. And even just the subtle things like alternating the colors over here for the, the bad water versus the extract is just a really, really nice touch. Everything is just really, really well laid out. And of course, you have your bot factories and all that other stuff. And it just the, the little details of like what goes where, it's, it's very segmented, but it doesn't feel like really artificial fake. It feels planned, but it doesn't feel like just sterile. It has some life to it. And of course, 
all the beavers living in the most efficient space housing wise uh, for footprint is the large row house so he's taken good advantage of that plenty of little uh, little coffee things scattered around again plenty of recreation and all sorts of different things for aesthetics like we have these braziers here we have all sorts of different things like lanterns i don't think these actually really do too much besides just you know the the one tile thing but they do look cool they do look cool and this is just s such a fun thing to watch like you just just post up here and watch how many bots make their way through here taking care of all of the beavers needs so they don't have to worry about anything they can just live a life of luxury once again like in the game timberborn is so cool there's just so much cool stuff you can do so so much creativity that you can take a hold of and make things that are just really really aesthetically pleasing really efficiently designed and really fun to take a look at and i know cycle 58 so th th that's a lot of work that has gone into this and i am just really 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 in love with how this how this is laid out how this works and all sorts of fun stuff it's just fantastic so yeah, that is just about it in terms of things that I wanted to highlight, but uh, I am going to go ahead, uh, I'll enter dev mode here, and we're going to advance to the next season. Uh, the options got moved around, I'm on a smaller monitor here. Where is, there we go, jump to next season. Alright, and there is cycle 59. So as this, uh, as this changes... Let's take a look. Uh, was it uh, where over here? Yeah, as this starts to become good water, let's see what happens. Because obviously the rest of this has to be irrigated somehow, right? So all that bad water is getting pumped away. These pumps are set to only work. Oh, oh, some of these do good water. Some of them do bad water. Haha, <laughs> that's actually really clever. I just thought they were all bad water because the ones I clicked on all said bad water. But yeah, so he's actually got a separate set of, uh, <laughs> look at this, look at this. I didn't even catch this, and I looked at this earlier too. Well, that's still really cool. Like, look, look at it, look at how this is set up, man. He's, he's got this separate canal here that only the good water goes into. And again, uh, like I showed you before, this whole thing, you peel back the layers, this is all just a massive, massive reservoir. And it has this little uh, little waterfall spill gate right here. Actually, is it going to let me... Uh... Yeah, so this is actually a dam. So this has to get completely full uh, before this water spills in. But then it just has this whole network of, uh, of little uh, canals, I guess. This one like wide stream thing that goes all the way around all the irrigable areas. And then, of course, up here. Uh, I believe these are just a uh, little fluid dumps are three by threes yeah like we had before in our other playthroughs here and this obviously doesn't need to be irrigated but man this is just so cool and what i really like is making the good efficient use of space here with the swimming pools because of course you're going to have to have swimming pools somewhere but to uh to make it actually a functional part of your whole uh your whole irrigation system is really cool and there's still plenty of space for the mangroves there's plenty here and over here as well to support a population of 400 beavers and then it goes all the way out here and then of course you have your your giant staircases and everything but yeah that is is just such a cool build thanks very much brian for sharing with us very very cool to see all this all this fun stuff so yeah that is it for today let's actually take a second here go back into dev mode because i want to show you the uh the overview here so we'll zoom out oh my poor computer but take a look at this from above and you can really appreciate how things have been segmented and really really thought out without it seeming like a really artificial like just mess kind of thing like there's there's very clear distinctions of what goes where but it still flows naturally which is really an impressive thing to achieve i'm, I'm not really able to do that at least not yet that's something i might want to try and get into in future builds but it's, it's just so much fun to see this and get some nice inspiration from all of the uh, the different things he's done here as well as our little perpetual motion machine thing that is just i i always wondered if it worked i've seen sky storm and some other people do it and I'm like okay well i guess i guess theoretically it does work but i've never tried to see if i could actually pull it off but now now i've got some ideas so 
that's that's one of the other fun things about doing these uh, these overview series, is that you get some cool stuff that you want to play with when you uh, get back into your own things. So we'll go ahead and uh, get you guys out of here and get things back to normal here. But yeah, this is just such a fun, efficient, nicely designed, carefully thought out build. So as always, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate you being here and sharing some time with me, even uh, while we're doing these shorter videos, but it's still so much fun to get to take a look at everybody else's submissions and how you guys are playing the game. So if you have anything you want to share, there's a link in the description below for you to submit your colony. Uh, tell me a little bit about it and upload the .timber save file. So if you uh, would like to submit yours for consideration, please do so. I'm going to leave the form open pretty much indefinitely. And from time to time, we'll pick and choose some of the uh, really cool ones that come in. So please do submit those. I do always look at all of them, but I can't make videos about every single one. Just know that if you do submit, I do take a look at them, and I very much appreciate uh, you sharing with me, and hopefully we'll get to take a look at yours in the future. But yeah, that's it. I uh, really appreciate you once again. Of course, Beard Boosters as well. And we'll see you back again next time for the next time we tackle Timberborn. It's probably going to be a couple more of these colony reviews because we got an update today. Uh, as of recording this video, that has broken all of the mods once again. But hey, that's what happens when you play in uh, experimental mode. A-OK. -okay. Love some of the new changes, but we'll talk about that when we get into our regular playthroughs. That being said, that's all I got. Have a fantastic rest of your day, whatever it is you're doing. Stay safe, have fun, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.